So we're now in a position to measure the angle between these two planes, uh, between the red plane and the blue plane, and we're going to measure that angle by counter degrees along the perpendicular plane shown in purple. So uh, the way we do that, we're going to make you zoom in a little bit, and we're going to measure the distance between the purple plane's intersection with the red plane and the intersection with the blue plane. Uh, so from here to the first bold line, we have 5 degrees, and then we have uh, 15, 25, 35, 45, 55, and then about three more degrees. So I would say that's 58 degrees. I'm going to label that up. Uh, 58 degrees. Uh, there we go. And uh, that was the distance from those two intersections. So I'm going to pick an arrow here. I'm just going to mark that up just to show what we've measured. So of course we measured it along the curving great circle line. Now it turns out there's another way uh, to do this. Instead of measuring from the intersections, we can measure the distance along the great circle between the poles uh, of these two planes. And I'm going to do that now. So we get uh, 6 degrees here, 16, 26, 36, 46, 56, 66, 76, 86, 96, 106, 116. And then looks like 118, 120, 122 degrees. Uh, so this time we've got 122 degrees. Uh, we're going to type that in there. 122 degrees. And so we've got two different answers for the angle between these two planes. Uh, now, uh, there always are two different answers between, uh, for the angle between two planes. Uh, let's just turn the net back to its starting position. And I will try to show you why, because when we're looking at two planes, uh, there are, are always two angles between them. Those two angles add up to 180 degrees. One of them is less than 90, and one of them is greater than 90. And only an ex inspection of the geological problem will tell you which one is the right answer in any particular circumstance.